Hi, I'm George Pearson. In this video, I'll be showing you how to use a technique called double processing inside the Camera Raw Editor inside of Adobe Photoshop. Now, when we're talking about double processing, we're talking about processing an image several times to improve different parts of the image. Now, if you enjoy this video, make sure to click that like button and also share with your friends. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you really want to learn how to use Photoshop, take a look at my complete training and you'll find links for that in the description. Okay, let's get to it. I have a picture opened up here inside of the raw editor and you can see how it has some problem areas. Obviously the boat is far too dark. There's no detail showing down here. The ground's a bit on the dark side, hard to see that. The sky is not too bad, but it could be improved a little bit. But each one of these areas would require a different setting. Let me just show you that. I'll bring these shadows up here. This will take care of most of the problem in the foreground right there. So it's a nice little foreground adjustment. The boat is looking better. I think the foreground looks pretty good right around here. It's still enough to look like it's in darkness. You don't want to go too bright, look like it's daytime. So you just want to have some darkness in the ground there, but you want it lightened up a bit. And somewhere in here is pretty good. That's still too dark for the boat. I can take this further on the boat and see some detail in along down the side. So the boat needs a little lighter setting in there. I also, of course, could adjust the blacks a bit as well. You know, work back and forth on these things. Now the sky could use a different exposure possibly in here. Maybe a contrast adjustment. So there are a few things that can be done on the sky as well, and they're different from the settings that would work out well down here. Right now, all of these settings are working on the whole picture, so I can get close, but I can't really adjust them separately, so I can't really do the ground separate from the boat, for instance. So that's where the double processing comes in. Let me just set these things back to their defaults, and let's start off with this process. I'll do the ground first. Before I do that, though, I'll go up here to the histogram, and upper left-hand corner, click on that little thing here. This is the shadow clipping warning. This will show me in blue if anything is losing, getting into the blacks, beginning to bunch up in the blacks. Looks like we're okay. On the right side is the lights. And right there, we're getting clipping happening right in there at the top of the picture. So that needs to be fixed. I'll worry about that a little later, though. That's really in a sky area. Now I can calm that down just by bringing down the highlights like that. It just pulls that out. But I'll leave that at zero. Let me just type that in. So I don't, I don't care about that yet. We care about the ground first. So let's take a look at the ground. And it's really a shadow area. It's kind of a dark tone. It's not black. So it's just kind of dark tone. So I'll bring the shadows up. And I want to bring it up so it looks like it has some nice detail showing in there, but it's not getting too bright like that. So I, I want to have some, you know, a nice look, but still kind of a shadowed look to it. And I think somewhere right around in here, looks pretty good for the shadows. Now on this one, we're only going to be keeping just this piece of the image. I don't care about anything up here right now. Only caring about just what's down here. Okay, so here it is. There's our first processing. Now I want to take this over into Photoshop, but I want to bring it in as a smart object. And the way you do that, down here it says Open Image. Hold the Shift key down, and then notice how it changes to Open Object. There's without, and there's with the shift key, open object. So that's what you want to do right there. Make sure you hold the shift key down and then click open object. And what that does is it brings this layer in as a smart object. And that gives us one real nice ability. And I'll show you that as soon as it loads in here. Of course, this is a very large file, so it'll take a moment to load in. There we go. Now, the nice thing about having this come in as a smart object right there is that I can make a copy of this. Now to do that, click on the right key on your mouse and then come down to New Smart Object via Copy, right there. Click on that. We now have a new object up here. Now the nice thing about this is I can double click on this. There we go, double click on the image and that reloads that new smart object back in the camera raw editor. So I now have a second chance to edit that separately. It retains the settings from the last setting, which is fine. I don't care about that. 
So let's now work on the boat in here. So I'll bring my shutters up a bit more. Somewhere in here, I'm beginning to see the detail in the boat. If I go too far, it, it gets kind of washed out. So I want to have just a bit of detail, not too bright, not too dark, but a bit of detail. As you can see, it is a higher setting than we used on the last processing. So there we go. That looks pretty good. Let's just check the blacks in here. I think that's okay. I'm going to stay fairly basic on this one, just the demonstration. I want to show you how to use the technique. I won't bother with coming in here for any of my additional settings like the tone curve or any of this kind of additional stuff. I'll leave all that alone. Normally I would spend more time in here getting a you know a perfect copy on that. But I just want to give you a demonstration of how this technique works and you can then take your time making your adjustments. So there we go. There's our new setting just for the boat. This time you can just click OK. It's already a smart object. It resets that smart object and give it a chance to come in. There we go. So there's the setting for the boat. Now if I show and hide that you can see the difference on the ground. The ground is much darker in my setting for that one and the boat is lighter but there's more detail in the boat. Let's now work on the sky up here. So I already have this double processed. Once for the foreground and once for the boat. Let's now process it for the sky in here. That'll be our third, actually triple processing. So same thing, right click and then go to New Smart Object via Copy right there. Click on that. There's our new smart object. Double click on that one. Double click. And that loads that smart object back into the Camera Raw Editor. Okay, now let's take a look and fix this thing up here and take a look and fix our sky. So I'll bring my highlights down and we should be able to get rid of that hot spot in there. Okay, right in there. That's good. Now I think we can darken this down maybe a little bit or bring contrast up on this possibly. Let's bring our contrast up. Notice I bring the contrast up. Looks better in the image, but we gain that big red blob again. So I'll bring my contrast up and then bring the highlights down a bit to tone that out right there. So we have an increased contrast giving us more color in the sky. And we've also handled that area where we were blown out on our highlights. Okay, there we go. So that's a nice setting for the sky and also for the water. I'm kind of doing these as one piece. Choose OK on that one. Once that comes in, we will then have three layers in here. So three processing. So instead of double, this is actually a triple processing. Once for the sky, once for the boat, and once for the foreground. Now we need to bring all this stuff together. And you do that with layer masks. So I'm on the top layer, my sky layer. Let's click the mask button. There we go. Here's our layer mask. I now want to mask out the boat and mask out the foreground in here, leaving just the background. And I'll do this in a real fast technique. To you know, do this carefully, you want to come in here and do a very, very careful selection around these. I'd recommend using the pen tool for that. Just take your time and do a real nice careful selection. But we'll just bypass all that and do it kind of fast and dirty here for this video so you can see the effect of the processing, the double processing, pretty quickly. So I'll just grab a nice lasso tool here, the polygon lasso tool. And let's zoom in a bit. A couple of clicks should be enough. Now again, this is going to be fast and dirty just for this video. I would take a lot more time on this if I was taking this to an actual finish. But I'll do an okay job. We'll just kind of go around the edges here. Now when you're use, using this polygonal lasso tool, don't go too fast on it or it will collapse down upon itself. You have to start all over again. So just take your time. And I'm going to skip that one rope that's over the water there. I'm not going to worry about that. I think that will look out look just fine. And then let's come right around the edge here. I'm coming in just a little bit just to make this faster for this video. And then we'll go up and around the boat as well. A little bit of water in there I want to keep. And then we'll use this to mask out this part of that top layer. So we're just showing the sky part. 
Now when this is finished, I may want to soften the edge up a little bit. And you can do that with the Gaussian blur filter possibly. If you're really careful, you also could do this just by painting right onto that layer mask using a soft edge brush, but I'll just do it this way, mostly because of the boat here. It has nice hard edges, so this works out well. Now again, if I was going to an actual finish on this and not doing this just for this video, I would come in and use the pen tool for this selection. Just hold the space bar down and I'll move the picture over a bit like that. There we are. And we'll finish this off quickly and make our layer mask. And what we'll see then is we'll see the boat layer for the bottom half of the picture and the sky layer just for the sky. We'll do the same process again on the boat layer just to block out the rocks at the bottom. And there's a fast way to do that. I'll show you that as well since we've already taken time on the rocks. There's a quick way to work that in. Okay, just about there. Now with this kind of a selection, you'll need to go outside, take it clear off the page down below here and then straight over to the left hand side. It's going to automatically auto scroll the picture as you can see. There we are. And then up here to the start. And that gives us a nice selection in there for the bottom part of the picture. Now I need black in here on this side. Black is my foreground color. Let's click on the paint bucket. I'll just click in there. That fills that bottom part with black and that gives me my layer mask. Okay, let's go ahead and then deselect and set this back onto fit screen. So let me just show and hide this now. Let's just disable that. There it is without the layer mask. It's darker, you can see that. And then enable layer mask, lightens up the book. That's the main thing I want in this. Okay, now let's go ahead and do the same thing to put the ground down to the ground layer. And while we're at it, I'm just going to rename these layers. I'll double click over here. This is our sky layer. Double click right here. Boat layer. And double click down here. That's our ground layer. Okay, now take the layer mask. Click on the layer mask. Hold the Alt key down and pull that straight down. That copies the layer mask down to this layer. Now I want to get rid of the boat on this part of it. I want the boat in white on the layer mask. Come down to the layer mask. Look for that outline. There it is. I'll do this one fast this time. I'll just grab my paint tool. It'll paintbrush right there. Switch over to white. And with the paintbrush, I'll just paint over the boat. Just like that. There we go. Maybe a little bit in here on that boat shadow. And there it is. So we now have the foreground is coming from this ground layer. See how it's hidden on both of these two layers? The boat is coming from our boat layer. And the sky is coming from the sky layer. So we have three different exposure settings in here on the one picture. Again, it's called double processing, but we're actually doing three processings in here from that single raw picture. Now the trick again is when you are opening your image, your first image here over into Photoshop, make sure you hold that shift key down when you click on that so it says open image and that will then open it as an object. So it changes from open image to open object that brings it in as a smart object and that gives you the ability to copy that layer to a new layer and then open it back up again in Camera Raw. So you can do three different processings or as many as you need to get exactly the look that you want. So there you go. That is how to do that double processing technique or in this instance the triple processing technique using Camera Raw. Thank you for watching my video. I hope you found it useful. If you like this video, click on the like button below to let others know. You can click the subscribe button so you don't miss any of my videos in the future. I'm frequently uploading new training videos. Don't forget to check out my website at howtogurus.com.